five cups. We're going to run the, the these two controls here, so level one and two. And then I'm going to put the BioRed QC on also, so we'll get some data from there. So I'll put level one on cup three. And uh, level two on cup four. And we'll just go ahead and fill them up. All right, and then we have loaded here is our pro time reagent with a stir bar. And I have our PTT reagent with a stir bar. And I have the calcium chloride reagent. It doesn't need a stir bar goes like that and I mean if you really take a look at it closely you'll see that there's two probes here and they have to go in either one of those holes now the calcium chloride has that opening in the center and what that's telling you is the front probe is going to aspirate the calcium chloride but the back probe is going to aspirate the PTT uh, or the uh, PT reagent. So, I mean, it, it's not a big deal, I guess, to know all that, but uh, also the front probe is the one that samples the patient. So, and then in here, here's our rotor. Now, this rotor is slightly used, so we'll go ahead and get rid of it because we're going to run a big batch of tests here. Um, but it, it also has holes that co correspond to these two probes so that the analyzer can deliver either reagent or patient into these wells. And then when it centrifuges it real, real fast, it's, it, it forces all the liquids out to the outer well, and that's where they mix, that's where the clot forms, and that's where the reading takes place, where it bounces the light off the clot and detects when the clot forms. So we're going to uh, put in a new rotor. Now, some, uh, some ACL analyzers uh, are, have a constant heating mechanism, so there's no pre-warming time necessary, but this is like the baby ACL, and he, um, he actually has to pre-warm this rotor to 37 degrees before it can analyze um, the test. So what we're going to do is we have five samples on there. We're going to run both tests. Um, we're going to go ahead and program both tests here. So we want to go back to like a main menu. Mm -hmm. And it does say please wait. So that probably means uh, don't push my buttons uh, unnecessarily. <laughs> this is the waste tube right here if you like to take a picture of that while we're waiting. Isn't that beautiful? And I just have it going down into the speaker. Some labs might have it going down into a drain, uh, but if it, of course, if it is in a container, you just have to, you know, wash it, dump it, and wash it out every day. Uh, these are the reagents we're using today. If any of you want to record the lot numbers, uh, so those are the reagents that I uh, put on the analyzer. There we go. We can proceed. All right, so first thing let's do, since it's been sitting for a couple minutes, is we'll go ahead and prime it. And you can see where it's priming here. Um, it actually, it uses this kind of as a washing liquid. It also, you know, it has to have liquid in the lines to assist with the the volumes that are being aspirated and delivered and it also delivers some of that reference fluid into some of the wells actually just probably one well uh, that it, it kind of uses as a like a zeroing blank reading so, so I'm going to kind of keep these vials handy here because I'll use them on the load list um, so that it comes, it prints out with the lot number of the QC. And now last week we went ahead and changed some of the tubing and I think that helped a lot because some of this tubing is getting a little brittle and I think it just wasn't um, moving the fluids through uh, right. 
But I, I did have success today. Mm -hmm. For example, here you've got your little video going. We could show some of the data. Here's a, a printout that's showing the PT uh, results with the INR. Let me see. There's the PT in seconds. And then the INR would be like 0 0.8 there. 29.9 seconds and 2.3 INR. So um, then also I ran the PTTs. Let's see here. Uh, here we go. So here's some examples of the APTT results showing the 28.4 seconds, 46.7, and 27.7 seconds there. So, so I did get successful uh, results earlier, and hopefully we can do the same now. So I'm going to select this test mode here so that the machine is going to run both the PT and the PTT off of these five samples uh, during this run. So we're going to press enter and then it reminds you what you need to have loaded. Your thromboplastin, your cephalin, which is your PTT, uh, your calcium chloride, and your reference solution right here. So we still got like half a bottle so we're good. Now it says press down to continue. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to select load list number one. Enter. Oh. Now if you didn't want to change the ID numbers, you can just press the down arrow to start. But if you want to edit your sample values, and the way this machine works is it detects the cup. It has a cup detection mechanism. So it won't run a test if there's no cup there. It will only run the test if it detects a cup. So you don't have to use this, but um, so let's just put in like the last few numbers of 7476 on this one, and then level 2, um, 7756. And then we ran this guy, 782. Four one, and this one is seven eight two four two, and then the patient. Let's just call the patient two two four six. Uh, okay, good. And then enter. And then the thing with this load list is that you actually have to enter all the way down to eighteen to um, be finished. And then, now it gives us the option to press down to start, and we can do that. Now it's telling us the rotor is preheating, because I don't know if you remember, but I guess to conserve energy, it doesn't stay at 37 in there. It has, well, it has to, um, Oh, it just t must have a, like a two or three minute heating time for that rotor. It has to get it to 37 degrees though, so. So, and then what's going to happen is once that's ready, uh, you'll see it'll start um, sampling. Which, I don't think I've ever really stopped and watched it. <laughs> Typically, you know, you walk away, and that's why these kind of machines are nice. If you have a lot of work to do, you typically load your machine and you go do something else. Um, but I, I, I'm very curious, really, at this point, to see whether it takes reagent first or it takes patient first. I think normally in most of our tests that we've been doing, we've been adding the patient first, right? So I predict that it's going to sample the QC and patients first. And it might be smart enough where it can actually stop and get the PT reagent and the sample. So see it comes here, comes here, and then it takes both of them over here to the rotor and puts them in the rotor together. Now they are in separate wells because they're separated until it starts centrifuging. So what it's probably going to do is pipette all of those tests into that rotor. Uh, so it'll pipette five wells of PT and then five wells of PTT. And then once that, all that pipetting's done, it'll centrifuge that rotor. And so it's going to take all those clotting time readings at the same time while that rotor's spinning.
Now, I don't know if you remember, but the, um, oh, see, now it's telling us do not open the cover. So now it's like getting serious, and that also means, too, don't put your hand in the way, because that arm's going to start moving around. There it goes. So it's starting with the PT test, looks like. Interesting. So, see that? It looks to me like it's going to load the PTTs first. See, it went to cup number three, now it took Synthesil and went over there. Now it's going to go to cup number four, get some Synthesil, take it over there. I was just going to mention that the name of this one is called Synthesil. On here it said Cephaloplastin. So, What's happened over the years is the uh, names of these reagents have become quite long. Uh, you know, 33 years ago, we used to call this thromboplastin, and pretty much all of the bottles said that. Now there's all different kinds of names. Recomboplastin, what do we have over here? Uh, uh, is it Inogen? What is that one called? Um, neoplastin. Yeah, so PT reagents can have a lot of different names. Let's see, one good thing maybe, it says P, it doesn't even say PT on here. So wherever you work, you just have to get familiar with, you know, the reagent that's being used on that system. But one thing that doesn't change, though, that I've never seen different is calcium chloride. That's always uh, got its own name, calcium chloride, yeah. Now it sort of looks like it only did the PTTs, didn't it? So it's gonna, it looks like it does a batch of PTTs first, and then, it, and then it'll probably go back and do a batch of PTs. So let's see, is it getting ready to do the calcium chloride? No, I don't know. No, it's, okay. I, I stopped paying attention though, I didn't get to see it. But now it looks like it's loading up the protein uh, in, the, in the carousel. You know, um, since it only took this and the sample, and then I could hear it um, circulating, it might have mixed those two things first. And now I think it's going to add calcium chloride. Yeah. Because think about how you do your test over here. You mix your patient and your PTT reagent, and you let that incubate, right? So it did that first. It centrifuged, causing those two things to mix in that outer ring. And now it, it's adding that final reagent. So now it's got 10 reaction wells ready to go for that final reading. So when it centrifuges, it, it'll be mixing this with the sample and the calcium chloride with the patient and the PTT reagent. Which all those, all those, those are the final steps that would create the clock formation. I, this is really actually fun for me after all these years. I've never sat and watched the exact pipetting. Um, now, the more highly, oh wait, let's hear, I want you to listen the, to the, um, so you can hear the sound that it makes when it centrifuges this. It's kind of like a whistling sound. But on the more advanced models, there's an automatic arm that transfers a brand new heated ro rotor to this area when this is all used up. So that automatic arm will take the dirty one and throw it in the waste, which is like inside, and then it transfers a new preheated rotor to this reaction area. So that even though you have a big batch of patients on here, 
Uh, the testing can continue without human intervention. Again, too, this is a uh, very, you know, strictly automated pipetting, so it only has to run one analysis. It doesn't have to get two results that match within a certain percentage. I don't know if you noticed that on the Stago, and when it it has a matching criteria that's a percent, not a sec, um, not a specific amount. Like I told you, PTT should match within three seconds. Well, that's what we used in the olden days, like when we were using the fibrometer, and our PTs had to match within 0.5 seconds. But the Stago actually, since maybe because it got their computer in there, I don't know, it's just, just the way it's set up. It's a percentage uh, where it has to match. Okay, so I think that's the noise. Yeah, now, see, it's like a, a hissing sound almost. It's it's uh, centrifuging the rotor really fast. Now everything's going out to that edge uh, where it's going to form the clot. This is your paper advance button. Well, it used to be. It's not doing enough. <laughs> I wonder why not. Hmm. Maybe because it's in motion? Because that usually advances the paper. Oh, and just to kind of tell you what it's doing, it's the acquisition phase, which is where it is gathering the, the time, the clotting time. I, I, di I didn't get far enough today with here, but of course on this analyzer you can enter your ISI and your mean normal reference as well uh, to keep current with your, your new lot number of uh, PT reagent. Um, but uh, Nia helped me today. We, we set the um, KC lines and the Stago to match, so they all have the same mean normal reference and uh, ISI value built in. And, um, you know, if we do end up still having time, I highly recommend that you guys run some more tests so that you stay familiar uh, with, and, and also, you know, you'll get better at it each time and then maybe you'll even, like, fall in love with the KC1. I actually kind of like it now because like experts on it, so. Well, this, today I did discover that one of the pipettes wasn't working right, so I don't know who was using it last week, so that could have caused some yeah. erroneous data. No, it was more we could this the start one at the same time, remember, you had a help us? Oh. And that was it. Is this, um, Yeah, I think you're done. It's 